universal suffrage that is why right to vote is our constitutional right legal right okay huh. so and provide that no person be ineligible this is this is why actually it is mentioned in constitution that is why despite of the fact that indian parliamentary indian parliament has its own law to regulate the election election commission of india is also having integrated structure of election except local governments because it is dealt by state commission state election commission is it clear so now let's have a look on because see i have actually chosen the structure and, and the language also sometimes from the book lakshmikant right i will i will make the explain the concept clarity and all these things in my language but in terms of notes because you will have more data from lakshmikant book other than ncrt and other books also so and say actually lakshmikant is providing the compilation of the associated contents required with various dimensions okay so rather than going through multiple languages okay i i, I would prefer to go you through the same languages given in lakshmikant right that is why some points over here which will be given into notes okay they are actually having the languages from lakshmikant so that you can have the sync of memorizing the things right once you read and memorize the things you will have a sync you will not have confused in the various different language right so when we talk about the election commission in india so what are the various procedures given in the constitution right so when we talk about the election process right election system there are various other provisions which are indirectly associated with parliament state legislative assembly president prime minister and other institutions but when we talk about the election system okay means starting from the voting to the election of a particular candidate this is called election system that actually deals with article under article 324 to 329 is it visible for online please yes okay clearly visible right yes so article 324 to 339 of part 15 of indian constitution deal with the electoral system in our country okay article 324 this is the only article which actually describe the composition functioning and structure of election commission it is not explicitly deals with the details of functioning of election of commission of india constitution itself authorizes parliament and state legislatures to make laws on the functioning terms and tenures of election commission of india okay so constitution allows parliament to make provisions in all matters relating to elections to the parliament and state legislature third point article 325 of the constitution ensures universal suffrage that is why right to vote is our constitutional right legal right okay huh. so and provide that no person be ineligible this is this is why actually it is mentioned in constitution that is why despite of the fact that indian parliamentary indian parliament has its own law to regulate the election but it cannot actually breach that article that no person be ineligible for inclusion in or to claim to be included in a special electoral rolls on grounds of religion race caste or sex so this is actually provided by constitution that no person can be can become eligible for inclusion in or claim to be included in a special electoral role what is electoral electoral role 
what is electoral roll this is actually the parliamentary language of defining the voter list in simple way everybody aware about the voter list this is actually in parliamentary form of language called electoral roll so whenever you find that term electoral roll it talks about voter list so on grounds of religion race caste or sex on these three four bases a person cannot be prohibited from included into voter list is it clear and when we talk about the right to equality or prohibition of discrimination we have one more term that is place of birth that is not here why because on the basis of place of birth it can be ineligible to include into voter list for example shri you belong to any other state okay but now you are applying for delhi voter list you can be ineligible but on the basis of religion race caste or sex these cannot be the ground of ineligibility place of birth can be because you are already enrolled at some other states electoral roll is it clear so there are only four ground not place of birth and article 81 and 170 that actually deals with the maximum number of seats in parliament and in legislative assembly they provide actually the ground how many seats are to be filled through elections right so this article 81 deals with lok sabha and 170 deals with the state assemblies right the maximum number of seats in parliament not only lok sabha that rajya sabha also and in legislative assembly of state so what is the maximum number of seats entitled to lok sabha 552 and what about rajya sabha 250 currently they are in 245 and what can be the maximum limit of the members of legislative assembly in a state they are 500 and minimum 60 right and we know that in like in parliament we have two houses lok sabha and rajya sabha in the same way some states are having two houses two chambers in state assemblies also they called legislative assemblies and legislative council so today we are talking about legislative assembly legislative assembly can have the maximum members 500 and minimum 60 in the same way legislative council can have the maximum number one third of the members of legislative assembly in legislative council the maximum number can be one third of the member of legislative assembly so suppose what is the maximum limit is 500 samajh mein nahi aa raha aa raha legislative assembly so suppose any, any state having 403 members okay in legislative assembly so what should be the maximum count of legislative council of that particular state that is 1/3 of 400 so if it is 102 134 and minimum should be 40 that is actually the composition range of and is it clear some state also having less than 60 member right that is they are no delhi is having 70 members right so they are mizoram sikkim goa am i audible online yes sir okay some other indications on the board right okay fine so now Coming to the next slide. Similarly, so this point we have we have discussed about legislative councils. Article one seventy one seventy one of the Constitution of India lays down the maximum number of seats of the legislative council. That should be the one third of the total number of members in the legislative. assembly so any one of you from online students if anyone have any kind of doubt in these points okay you can unmute and ask me okay and the minimum number would be 40 okay this can be good point for your 
prelims examination also then the up c now to regulate the elections we have two act other than election commission act 1951 other than this the representation of the people act 1950 and another act is rpa 1951 also there right so therefore the representation of the people act 1950 was enacted to provide for the allocation of seats in the house of the people okay and in the legislative assemblies and the legislative council of the state another feature of the act is to confer on the president the powers to delimit delimit means to define a the territorial area of a particular constituency okay so let me finish first the concept of defining the territorial constituency okay how they are formed see in a country suppose this this is the particular area of a country do not go with that i'm just defining the <laughs> mathematical concept right so this a particular area of a particular country this country is divided into various states okay and this states can further divided into various constituency okay only constituency not district in terms of election okay they are divided into constituency means one constituency is allocated for one candidate right one candidate means a person can fight here for election and there can be there is no limit of number of candidates that can they can fought for particular constituency and this constituency is called seat okay for example in Lok Sabha we have 552 seats okay out of the two are reserved earlier two were reserved for Anglo Indians now this clause has been removed okay so we have 550 seats on which we can fight right now these actually the entire India is divided into 550 constituencies is it clear including UT is also so or and these 550 constituents constituencies further divided into the states okay it can be up mp so this is the division of constituencies if you sum this division it would be 550 is it clear for everyone so these this territorial entity is called constituency okay so over the period of time we find that because of the changes in areas of particular states okay suppose andhra pradesh and telangana has been divided so now it will the task of delimitation commission to define the territory again according to revised territory is it clear in the same way if population increases okay so over the period of time every census has some increased population so her bar every time we find that population is being increased okay so on the basis of that seats should also be increased right so that is why the changes in area and population the constitution the constituency or the territory also changes right either can increase or decrease so this is actually the concept of delimiting the territories okay yes right so here we were doing took the act also sought the, to confer on the president that president actually appoints the delimitation commission to delimit the territory means the limitation the territory ki usko delimit karna usko change karna usko alter karna is it clear so that is actually provided by the representation of the people act so for prelims examination also it is important that which of the act provides the president the powers to delimit the constituency this is actually the rpa act 1950 not 51 okay after consultation with the election commission the various constituencies the act further provided for the registration of electors for parliamentary assembly and cons council constituencies and for the assembly and council constituencies okay council cons assembly and council constituencies means there must be different constituency for 
स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली कैन बी डिफरेंट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली फॉर इलेक्शन ऑफ लोकसभा राइट सो दे आर नॉट एक्चुअली द सिमिलर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी फॉर बोथ द काइंड ऑफ इलेक्शन राइट सो बिकॉज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन उत्तर प्रदेश वी सी दैट फॉर लोकसभा इट हैज एटी सीट ओके एंड फॉर राज्य फॉर इलेक्शन ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इट हैज फोर हंड्रेड टू सीट राइट सो इट मीन्स यूपी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू एटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज राइट फॉर इलेक्शन ऑफ लोकसभा एंड फॉर इलेक्शन ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इट इज डिवाइडेड इंटू फोर हंड्रेड टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज इस इट मीन्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी साइज कैन बी वेरिड फॉर लोकसभा इलेक्शन एंड लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इलेक्शन इज इट क्लियर फॉर एवरी वन दैट दिस पॉइंट सेज राइट सो इलेक्टर्स कैन बी डिफरेंट ऑल्सो एम पीज एंड एम एल ए आर टू डिफरेंट पीपल राइट दो मेंबर ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली कैन नॉट बी द मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट राइट एट द सेम टाइम they have to resign either of them is it clear trisha fine now coming to the next then why 1951 act came into picture because the rpa did not contain all the provisions relating to the elections but merely it was associated with the 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 limitation of the constituency number of seats how much they are there but it's not actually dealing with the conduct of election how the election processes will take place right that is why this act 1951 was enacted to provide the entire procedure of election right so that deals with the so that deals with actually the 1950 was dealing with the delimitation allocation of seats and the qualification of voter right that universal suffrage right now the provisions for the actual conduct of the election of the houses of parliament and the state legislatures the qualifications and the disqualification for the membership of these houses right what were the qualification of candidate as well as the voters and disqualification of voters as well as candidate was not defined in article act of 1950 that is why 1951 was enacted the corrupt practices and election offences and the decision of election disputes all were under the rpa 1951 this is the major difference between the act rpa 1950 and 1951 so for prelims purpose i would tell you a short strategy to remember these because rpa 1950 is dealing with very few features right four features are there allocations of seats and the disqualification and not disqualification the this the suffrage right of voters right so there are very few features rpa 1950 dealing with remember those features other than that all are part of 1951 because 1951 are dealing a number of issues okay so you cannot cannot remember all the dimensions or the features of 1951 when you are asked in the prelims examination do you can remember for your mains examination but when you are getting confused whether this features being deal with rpa 1950 or 1951 in that case this is a study you remember right